Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we are going to go over iterables, specifically lists. An iterable is an object that can contain multiple values, and there are several different types. Today, we are going, going to go over lists. When we remember from before, var a equals 1, okay? Or specifically, we'll be more precise, int a equals 1. You can change the value for a, you can make it 2, 3, or whatever you want to do, but at any given time it has only one value, and it can only hold one value at any given time. An iterable is something that can carry more than one value at any one given time. Let's start with lists. The type is list. Um, I'm going to use more specific variables from now on. My list, not super specific, but just kind of get us into the habit of doing that. Um, so by the way, when we go over um, variables themselves, you want to be as specific as you can without going overboard in terms of what the variable is. For example, if your variable is a breed of dog, you might want your um, variable to be dog or dog breed. And then if you want to talk about the age of dogs and you want to make sure that's different from cat ages, elephant ages, you might say dog age. Okay, and, and notice it starts the variable, so dog breed equals collie, um, and dog age equals um, two, which is 10 years for you and me or something like that. But um, you got to declare it. I'm just using this as an example, though, okay? So string int. Um, and and what we, it's, the variable starts with the lowercase. Every new word has a capital. So breed for for all pets that okay. So you don't want to go crazy, okay? So don't don't make a huge massive variable that's hard to read, but have it a little bit descriptive itself. And every new word starts with a capital. That is what we call camel case. When you refer to variables, starts with a lowercase, every new word, capitalize, every other letter after that is lowercase. All right, so just as an example. So that's why you see my list, my list. How you establish or declare or how you initialize the list itself, starting with brackets and close. It's, a, it's an empty list to fill it. We can start putting characters inside of your one. Hello. Um, 4.3. Oh, by the way, notice the autocomplete is trying to guess what we're trying to do. It thinks that this dot is a dot instead of a point. So it's trying to figure out what method can I help you with. True. Spaces don't make a difference here whatsoever. Um, print my list and it'll print it notice this is dynamic it doesn't make a difference if it's integers strings doubles bools right in order to if you want to make it a little bit more specifically hey these are only integers if you want dynamic that's perfectly fine depending on what you want on your list if you want it specifically for integers let's create a new one list integer list equals one two three four you want to do one of two things you could do put the int right here this is what we called a parameterized type so it's a type but it's a parameterized type it's a, one of those things that you put next to iterables that lets you basically know everything here is going to be an um, uh, an integer if you put string, all of these will be strings and so forth. However, this is an optional parameterized type. For example, if you put one, two, hello, no error, and if you print it, it will still run. Even though it's not an integer itself, it's an optional type, it will help you along the way. 
especially when you read these, when you, when you go through them. And I'm putting this up not because we're going to be using this a lot, but when you read code, you may see these, this punctuation, this syntax, and just to keep aware of that. If you want it to be 100%, so basically like static typing, where it is required, you put the int here on the right side. So that basically tells you everything here is going to be an integer and has to be an integer. It's not optional. Otherwise, it will throw you an error. If you try to print it, it will actually make it an error itself. So it has to be integers themselves. So just to keep in mind, parameterized type, on the right side it's required, on the left side it's optional. Um, so why why does it really help? We'll go into that in just a couple seconds. Um, actually, we'll go, go over it very quickly in a few seconds. Um, the uh, what is characteristic of a list is this is in an ordered set. Okay, it's in order. The zero place one, two, three. It's in an order right inside here. So how you retrieve it? You retrieve it by saying brackets my list the variable bracket and wait which position it always starts with zero and it goes on so my list zero that should give me the one value it accesses the one value itself by the way inside here these are called elements so it accesses the zero space element in my list and if we go on to zero one two so that should be four point four right so that's how we access it itself when you think about it as in addition my list is actually it's an object, right? I just said it's an object that has multiple values. So if it's an object, we can start doing things with the object. So my list dot, we can do a bunch of things. By the way, you, you notice this thing void? We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Everything else we kind of know. Like here's the classical length itself right here, length, my list dot length. So we're going to say my list dot length. It's four. One, two, three, four. In position, okay, in position, this is the one in an ordered position. But if you're counting the number of values, of course, you're going to start with one. You can't start count with zero. Start with one. But in terms of places, you start with zero. I hope that's clear. So it's an object. You can do things to this itself. And you can also do add. So you can add things on top of it. You can add three. Let's print it out. What's it going to show? Everything plus three at the end. Okay. In addition to that, we could also do add all. But if you're going to add all, you're going to add multiple values here. You're going to have to do a bracket. Three comma by... And then that'll add that on top of there. So it's really easy. It's really nice to see these things in list. And lists are actually very, very important to use. I, at first, when I was learning to program, it was like, well, how often am I going to use something like this? You actually use it quite a bit. Um, going back to the, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around here a little bit. Going back to the int. Okay, remember that. How does this really help you very much? Um, let's say print int dot my list so uh, integer list dot if it's an object and you want to do things to it you can do them just the same as well you can add things on to it but again if you put a bool it'll give you an error again it's a type error if you put add a number It'll be per that error will go away. Remember all of these elements inside of here. These elements are actually objects themselves. If you look at what Dart does, my list. I'm going to access this the one position itself. So this is going to be the hello, right? It's an object, so I can do things with the object. I'll see what the autocomplete does. It's not very complete, is it? It doesn't do a whole heck of a lot. It doesn't give you many options. How about printing my integer list? 
So let's access the number 2, so that'd be 1. That's the 1's place, 0, 1. And let's see what you can do for that. It gives you a whole bunch of, of options themselves. Is even. Is it even? Yes, that should be true. And it gives us true. But notice the computer did not, the Dart editor did not give us any help right over here. It gave us very little options. Why? It had no idea that this was going to be, in, these elements were going to be integers. For all it thought was that here, it's dynamic. It could be an integer. It could be a string. So it really couldn't tell you, couldn't help you very much with what to do. So it basically gave you the bare minimum of what is possible to manipulate an object, but no more. And so therefore typing, if you go ahead and use parameterized types or any type of static typing, that's what I mean what, when I've said in the past that the Dart editor will help you along the way. Every bit of help, you know, always counts and it's always appreciated. So by doing things like this, if you know positively that this is an integer, this is a series of strings, they will help you along the way. Use them if you can. Okay, I hope that was clear. Lists are very useful and we'll be using them in the very near future when we go through some examples. And good luck. Thanks.